What disgusting secrets does your employer keep from its customers? Don't forget to subscribe to the Reddit guy and turn notifications on. Thank you. I worked at Dairy Queen. The collection box supporting children with cancer hanging out the drive through window was a discontinued charity. My manager pocketed all the donations. Disgusting in a different sense. A nice story to balance it. The McDonald's I worked at didn't even have the key to open the charity boxes. The only person who did is a man from the charity, who takes every last penny for its intended cause once a month or so. Good until a customer drops their debit card into the donation slot by the drive through and we can't get it out. Back when I was a warehouse manager for a major office supply chain, one of my duties every month was to gather items from our inventory that were selected by corporate to be donated to local charities. All items would be collected, scanned, placed on pallets, and loaded onto the trucks to be delivered to the charity distribution center. After a few months I started to notice that some of the donation items that should have been shipped out mysteriously ended up missing or being used in my general manager's office. I later discovered that on the days that the donation items were collected, my manager would send me out for lunch and revert the scans on whatever donation item he desired, in order to keep it for himself. I eventually caught him in the act as I returned early from lunch, and needless to say he was not able to come up with a good excuse. Instead, he insisted that I take my pick of whatever I wanted from the pallet. I was so disgusted that I immediately put in my two weeks notice, during the busiest time of the year, and filed a complaint with corporate. So what happened? Did you ever hear back? I later discovered that many of the corporate loss prevention managers were just as corrupt as my general manager. It was rumored that a lot of money was exchanged to cover up such incidents and in order to provide the store with high corporate loss prevention ratings. Unfortunately, I had no direct evidence to back up my claims, so it was quickly swept under the rug as soon as my two weeks were up. From personal experience, it is quite a punch in the stomach to learn that every level of management within your company is corrupt especially when you report wrongdoing and then they all cover for each other. Made me feel like a complete idiot. Kudos to you for not selling out and jumping on the gravy train. That we can see you. I look after instant photo booths remotely. I see all your stupid faces, all of them, every day. Oh wow. What is the best thing you've seen? Probably a couple trying to take a picture of them kissing but the guy sneezes just as the photo was taken. You can see the snot flying at her. But we also get the occasional person falling off the still as the picture is taken. Obviously saving any images taken in the booths is an instant firing so I can't show any of them. I used to work at Family Video. They didn't want us mentioning the existence of the internet in front of the customers. Especially the ones that rented porn. Colleges, they say everything they do is for the benefit of the student but really the students are so far removed from the day-to-day -day operations of a college that they are mostly a second thought at best. Everyone really just wants to stay employed. I don't think it's much of a secret that the professors are there for research, their bosses are there for administration, the money it brings, and the respect it brings, and students are there to cling helplessly to the its of knowledge, trying to suckle whatever they can from a dry, ignored afterthought of a college campus. Then one day they took and starve the next generation. I just want to say that if you have ever worked at a water park, it will turn you off of visiting any kind of public pool or park for the rest of your life. The shiz we pulled out of those filters, man, no. Just pour so many chemicals into the water that literally nothing can live in it and call it a day. Anything unique you pulled out that really stands out in your mind, or was it basically a messy concoction of slop? We've pulled out innumerable weaves and fake nails. Lots of little dead animals, voles, mice, birds, the like. Band-aids, condoms, dirty swim diapers, tampons, glass, trash of all sorts, including food trash, wallets, phones, empty sunscreen tubes, just everything. People are disgusting. I work in designer clothing retail. The clothes are quite expensive and the assistants are required to only wear full priced garments. So we, the whole team, just pick clothes off the rack, wear them all day, including lunch and bathroom breaks, and at the end of the shift, replace the tags and put the clothes back on the shelf for the customers to buy at full price. 
I know I was grossed out my first day there. This is why I always wash my new clothes first. After graduation, one of my roommates from undergrad went on to the University of Texas at Austin to do a master's degree in advertising. At first he was super excited because the program there at UT was the best of its kind in the country, and he really liked Austin. However, by the end of it he had totally changed his outlook on advertising, and actually ended up going into a different industry. Apparently his last semester there, the students in his program had to an internship with a real company and help them come up with an advertising campaign. One of his friends in the program was really excited because he had gotten his internship with Jack Daniels, the whiskey producers. However, their view on advertising was completely shattered when his bosses at Jack Daniels literally told the guy to go to AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, meetings, and figure out what they would have to do to get those people drinking again. I used to work for a local children's charity where a good majority of the money was skimmed to pay for the owner's for-profit business. This happens in big charities too, volunteers at the bottom, six-figure salaries at the top. The fajitas sizzle because we pour oil and water on a hot plate not because we grilled anything. My whole life is a lie. I once worked for a small retirement home that was owned by a church. I was the night watchman and during the night, I could smell the odor of shiz wafting down the halls. Everyone could, and the nurses at the nurse stations would typically wait until their mandatory rounds times to deal with it. So they basically let residents lay in their shiz. Note, I'd say about 10% of nurses actually gave a damn about the residents. All the other ones were just there to get paid. I will never go into a nursing home. I would kill myself first. I used to work at Dick's Sporting Goods as a cashier and the managers would constantly tell us to try and sign people up for credit cards to save 10% on their purchase. Usually the only people that would sign up seemed to be people that didn't have much money and were desperate for that 10%. The head manager emphasized that we should never tell them the interest rate, 27% and just try to sign them up before they ask what it is. I always told people what it was, advised against the card, and usually just gave them a 10% off coupon anyway. If you come into Jeek Squad with a computer under warranty, we are required to at least perform a $70 diagnostic on the computer before sending it out for repairs. If viruses are detected, that price goes up to $190 for the removal. I have had to remove viruses from a client's laptop, and then send the laptop off to get the hard drive replaced. Also, $30 RAM installations of per stick of RAM. Seriously, one time our department was doing poorly in sales so they brought in a specialist to give us an after hours training session. He opened up with, if anyone is stupid enough to walk through those doors looking for a repair, they deserve to be charged $189 for it. I ducking hated that place. Macy's, men return used underwear and we repackage it and put it back on the floor to sell. I just quit so I don't give a duck. I worked at Best Buy, and I did my best to be nice to people. I spent time with people, got to know them, talked with them to make sure I got exactly what they needed, and nothing they don't. People loved me. They'd come back to me every so often with questions on their products. I was the reason they came back. Personally, I valued return customers more than just the one big sale. So what if I didn't land a $2000 sale? At least they still trust us and are coming back again. Well, turns out the management didn't like my sales theory. Even though I was one of the highest selling people on the floor, they cut all my hours. They made me work inventory, I worked in PCs. They put me on registered duty. They pushed me away in order for all the salespeople who were robots and just wanted to land the big sales could do their thing. I couldn't take it anymore, so I quit. Oh. Side story. I was selling a PC to this poorer family, they wanted a cheap machine that only did Facebook and Word. So I hooked them up with a $300 laptop that did just that. I spent half an hour with them, and that was exactly what they needed. After the sale. My manager pulled me off to the side, and ragged on me for not getting them to buy the $250 protection plan on it. What the F. Needless to say, I was more than excited to leave those doors for the last time. I still haven't shopped there ever since. 
This happened years ago but I was a receptionist for a chiropractor for about 6 months. One day our first appointment came in, I went in the back to look for him. I walked in on him having X with a co-worker on the table. The same table the patient sometimes would lay face down on. I went back to the front and said, he'll be with you in a couple minutes. God I was disgusted. He was married with two young kids. I didn't work there long after that. Is this why the doctors are always late to appointments? I used to work in a major movie theater and we would recycle hot dogs. Basically, if the links were on the spinning rack all day and didn't get purchased, they would be thrown in a bucket and refrozen. We poked a fork hole in one to see how long it would stay in rotation. 7. Ducking. Days. Sears. Pushed and encouraged to sign you up for things without the customer's consent. Phone number and email is all we need to sign you up for Shop Your Way Rewards. With or without your consent we will do it. DM tells managers to tell us to do it because it has worked so well in other stores to keep numbers up. Wells Fargo. All around shady. Straight up lie to people to get them over to a banker to open up checking accounts by telling them our policies are changing and they have to do this. Making sure they have every single product whether it will actually benefit you or not. We will not give up until you have them all. One time a blind lady came up to my window with three separate checking accounts under her name and she didn't even know why she had them. Turns out a banker had opened them all up for her to meet quota. So one psychoid Wells Fargo, I moved all of my accounts elsewhere. Used to sell cars at a major dealership. The unofficial sales contest was to see how much of Ms. RP they could sell the car for by confusing the customer on the price with payments financing manipulation of trade value and sometimes outright fraud, like promising manufacturer rebates then not applying them. The winner for the two months I was there was over by 10,000, selling a car that should have been 20,000 for over 30,000. The sad part is the customer might never even know because they still got the payment they wanted. Please do yourselves a favor and don't shop solely based on payments and if you are financing then make sure you are aware what the final selling price of the car is. There is a major difference between $400 a month at 60 months at 0% interest and $400 per month at 84 months at 0.9%. Worked for a self-storage place in Rocklin, California. They made every customer sign a lease agreement that said that you wouldn't hold them responsible if your unit was broken into and things were stolen. I found out that we had 7-8 burglaries a year. The owners would get sued but they would always get off because they'd produce a lease agreement in court and the judge would dismiss the case. One day I came in from vacation to pick up my paycheck, and I found the owner and the manager loading up a truck with the contents from a unit that wasn't theirs. I went around the corner to an area where the fence allowed me to look in, and saw that they went to another storage space, cut off the lock, and proceeded to load up the truck with a telescope, big screen TV and some power tools. I came back the next day and asked one of my co-workers, he told me that the owners of the storage space would sell the stuff they stole from renters, and that the manager and owner did the same thing with another property that they owned in Granite Bay. I quit to go back to Sac State. I called the Rockland cops to tell them what the owners were doing, and they said that there was nothing they could do unless they were caught in the act. I worked at a self-storage for over a year. We had a one month grace period if a unit wasn't paid for and I would just put one of our master locks on it. Well a lot of times the people would come in and scream at me, the only employee on site, about how they had paid and our lock shouldn't be on their unit. It turns out the owner was overlooking all the units that had good stuff in it so he could return, in the middle of the night, to steal from them. He would put the most prospective customers in the areas with the fake CCTV cameras so he wouldn't get caught. Turns out they weren't fake cameras and just needed to be hooked up. He was caught and arrested after me and the security company fixed the cameras. I used to work at Victoria's Secret. We are required to refund and take back any used underwear as well as everything else in the store. It would then immediately go back on the sales racks even if it had obviously been worn. I showed my manager a used pair of pink panties that had a disgusting smell that resembled tuna and she advised me to just spray perfume on it. I didn't quit immediately because I needed the money. Instead I would grab a pair of scissors from the back and accidentally cut the ones that I knew had been used so they had to damage them out and not sell them. 
I worked overnight area at Walmart for a few years after I moved, had 7 years total with the company and hated every minute of it. So in the dairy, we often get returns, stuff that has been left out in the store, and it's our job to put it back up. No thought is given to how long these things have been left out, they're put into a cart and wheeled into the cooler. It doesn't matter if a gallon of milk has been sitting out 5 minutes or 5 hours, it goes back into the cooler and probably back on the shelf. This is done in the name of expediency which is what drives every policy at Walmart. Things don't get done right, they get done fast. So with milk, if a dairy employee finds it outside the cooler, it probably goes on a return pallet, because we know better than to put room temp milk back in the cooler, and the store gets a refund on milk we send back to the milk company. Not so with regular employees, who, as they are trained, put it in a basket, wheel it into a cooler, and hand it off to the next guy, who probably is getting shiz from his manager to get this stuff back on the shelf. Eggs. Eggs come in with general freight. They don't do returns on eggs. Once again, if a dairy employee picks them up, they probably get ditched in the giant bin of milk eggs flour that sits outside the cooler. And ferments and smells terrible, but at least it's a good 5 feet from the candy bins, so it's not like any cross-contamination is possible, and never see the shelf. However, same thing as the milk. It could be sitting out for a week, it'll get put on a cart and wheeled back to a cooler, and someone will yell at someone else until it gets put back on the shelf, because nobody likes getting yelled at. While working there, I came down with food poisoning on at least three occasions, none of which I was allowed to go home. I walked out on the third, after I puked in a mop bucket, told my manager about it, and then found out that mop water, which was probably a day old in the first place, was used to mop the cooler, because nobody ever told the employee on duty to change the water. This is ignoring their terrible policies regarding how they treat employees and train management. Don't buy food at Walmart, because it might be cheap, but you're getting what you pay for.